Okay, Dave, good to see you. First of all, how, how, how are you doing? How, how are you and the family coping? Well, Mal, uh, thanks for asking and I uh, hope you guys are well. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of surreal. Um, we are uh, isolating. Um, our youngest daughter um, lives around the corner and she's a nurse. And so she has Fiona and I isolating just now. Fiona has a bit of a weakened immune system. And so we're just not taking any chances. Um, my highlight of the day, apart from talking to people like you on a video conference, is driving down to Starbucks, uh, the drive through and getting a Starbucks coffee and, um, and a bagel. But uh, no, everybody, uh, everybody here seems to be uh, in lockdown. There's hardly any traffic at all. And um, in fact, uh, the police here where we are in Atlanta have actually been stopping people doing non-emergency um, deliveries, for example. But uh, yeah, we're doing fine, thanks. Just a little bit surreal and missing the football. We'll come on to the, the financial plan in a minute, but just uh, first of all, I mean, just remind all the fans that the most important thing at the moment is to, to stay inside and stay safe. And that, that, that is the most important thing at the, the moment, isn't it? Oh, oh certainly, Mal. And, um, you know, as we're, we're, we're seeing where people um, isolate, they stay indoors, um, it will help curb how long this goes on. It's interesting to see as well that in, um, in, the, in, in Asia, that some of those countries that began to relax the rules um, of getting together are now seeing uh, it come back again. And so um, it's just very, very clear that the most important thing is for, for our fans and our community to, to do what they can so we can get through this. And I have to, I have to say that the, the club and the community trust working together and with the support of a lot of people, including the fans, the nations, uh, our volunteers are doing an incredible job um, of um, helping people. And I, I had one example just earlier this morning of a family that hadn't, hadn't, hadn't eaten anything all day and it was the evening and, and we brought um, a delivery to them. And I think the, I think um, we are delivering from Maastricht to Macduff and it's just uh, fantastic to see, you know, in, in times like this, um, you see people um, really step up as communities, you know, and um, but listen, uh, everybody just needs to stay he safe and healthy. The other thing is we've got 20 people in a call center between trust uh, folks and um, club people that are um, calling, aiming to call 12,000 people over the next few weeks. Uh, we got to 1,000 so far. And, um, and, and if somebody needs to be lifted up or somebody needs some help, there's an email address as well. If you go to the club site uh, or call in, then there's an email address there to be able to, um, uh, if someone needs some help. For example, we've had some people in England that have got elderly family uh, Don's fans in Aberdeen and they're on their own and so um, don't be shy now's the time to to kind of open up and um, and ask for help and I'm just delighted we got 20 people in the call centre making all these calls and it's the right thing to do Mal. Yeah and you've been doing some calling yourself Dave have you? Spoke, spoke yes. One or two fans. Yeah yeah I've made a few calls and um, um, in fact one of them I made um, um, the 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 um, the fan themselves says, "I mind you going to Gothenburg." Um, we all went out, or we certainly did the day before, flew over there, and um, and it just shows you how a bit of a village, you know, Aber Aberdeen is. But you know, I, I get a lot out of it myself. It's really nice to chat to people. You know, I love talking to my wife. You know, but when you're on your own in the house, uh, twenty four seven almost. Right. It's really good to get on Skype or the video conference and talk to people. So um, been a very, very busy week this week, a long week for everybody at the club. But uh, next week, hopefully frees up so I can begin to make more calls as well. But I, I enjoy them and it's just great to, to hear people talk about their favourite player, their memories of certain games, you know. A lot of work's obviously been going on behind the scenes. Um, you came out, you were very transparent. You came out and said that there's a, 
five million pound gap in the, the cash flow. Um, so can you maybe just give us a wee bit of detail? What, what's the, the plan that the, the club have put in place? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. And, um, you know, we came out, I think, a week past Monday um, with, a, with a statement to try and be transparent. And um, it's just been amazing how everybody's kind of rallied to this. Um, obviously, it's a very serious situation. Um, our assumptions are that we're back playing football sometime in August, um, hopefully no later than early September. And so how long is a piece of string? How long does this go on for, right? Um, but that's our assumption that's there. We stated that we had one and a half million in the bank in the statement and um, um, delighted. Um, I mean, I will just say this, that uh, between um, uh, Derek and his team um, and um, guys like Rob Wicks and Kevin McIver, Stephen Gunn, and I'm probably missing out some other people there as well. But the leadership team at the club across the board, on the field, off the field, have been incredible. And, you know, I've heard stories this week, Mal, of, um, you know, um, people in my position at other clubs having to deal directly with players themselves. And you know what? Derek has been incredible. He has managed this whole thing with Stephen Gunn and the PFA and the players. And what I have to say is, is that, and even the off the field staff as well with the town halls that we all did with them. I mean, everybody has been appreciative of the transparency and how we've gone about this, I believe. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a deferment, it's not a pay cut. And we most certainly have um, made sure those uh, employees that are on the lesser scale of a salary are looked after and not touched um, and that this, um, I believe anyway, overall is, is a soft landing and it keeps everybody employed. And so that was one of the most important things for, for us as a board was keeping everybody employed and um, and uh, making the defer making it a deferment rather than, th than a cut. So all of that is to say um, that has delivered 1.1 million of savings over the next four months. We did talk before um, last week about um, us run our running cost being about 1.2 million a month. Um, that takes it down now over the next four months to about 950,000 per month. It's still a sizable chunk um, in and of itself. Um, um, my investor group, um, including myself, um, we've made a, a commitment to 2 million um, as well. And um, obviously, um, We've been heartened by the fans who um, have uh, been renewing their season tickets, um, which is helpful, very helpful, and we'll continue to drive on that now and appreciate that some people can't do it just now for obvious reasons, but for those that are willing and able, it's very much uh, appreciated. We've had some of our um, seasonal diners and corporate um, supporters, in some cases, um, not just pay us in advance for next season, but for two seasons. And and so that kind of volunteering mile of, of support for the club, you know, is heartening. And the key thing to for this is, is that, that we come through this uh, as strongly um, as a club and, and as a community. So uh, we've got that in place now. It gives us a platform now to to go forward. Just, I mean, just on the managing the players, I mean, they deserve an awful lot of credit, don't they, Dave, the way they've gone about this, the way that they've handled the situation. And I think just fantastic the way that the, you know, everybody involved in the Aberdeen family, you know, the time of need, everybody's come together, haven't they? Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, um, I will say this, that um, we've got, we've got a great, well, we've got great staff across the board, you know, I like to call us team members. Everybody's fantastic. But if you take the, the, the actual team itself, the football team of players, uh, Derek has got a great dressing room there. We've got some fantastic people there that, you know, from Joe, club captain, all the way through that wanted to do the right thing. And, you know, for us as a family club, it was really important for everybody to collaborate on this and come to this decision today, which we've done. And um, and 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 obviously it's, it's really appreciated as well. Obviously, Mal, a lot of nervousness around what we were going to do and and would this be layoffs and would it be salary cuts? Um, and so 
I think that, um, you know, in fact, I, I did say the other day on the town halls yesterday that I wish we could have um, got back to to the, the, the staff earlier. But, um, you know, the fact that there's uh, we're planning no cuts and it's a deferment, I think, has been not just well received, but but actually many of our um, uh, employees have been willing to come forward and say that we're willing to, to help as well. So uh, just a great, um, it's just an example of us being a good family club, Mal, that we um, have sorted this out internally and everybody's pleased with the outcome, given the situation we're in. Do you see, Dave, about the supporters? We all absolutely appreciate that not everybody's in a position at the moment to help. We have to look after the families. That's the most important thing. Uh, but for, for those who are able to help and buy season tickets, I mean, they really will be making a difference at the moment, won't they? And, they, you know, we won't forget about this. We will reward them in, in the future as well. Yeah, look, um, you know, I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime, right? If you take the bigger picture, and none of us probably did, bigger picture, you know, look, looking at it, um, the world wasn't ready for this uh, pandemic. And I think hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the good that comes out of this is that um, going forward from here, whether it's ventilators or other things, that we're ready for this if this kind of comes around uh, again. And, and, and they do come around um, every so often. But I really think it's important for, um, for, for us to recognise those that can do it, the fans that are stepping up just now and buying their season tickets when, in fact, you know, we're not sure will we start at the beginning of August, middle of August, end of August. Um, so it's it's very much appreciated. Look, I, at the end of the day, I'm a fan myself, and it's not my club, it's not the board's club, it's the fans' club, right? It's our club, uh, right? And we all do our bit, right? And so from that perspective there, what we're hoping, listen, we're really working on, Cup's half full, we're now really working on some initiatives. We'd already announced, Mal, that we want to move to a membership-based club, one umbrella, so that people aren't Aberdeen DNA and a season ticket holder. In many cases, both. Half of our season ticket holders are Aberdeen DNA members. But this umbrella relationship we announced right before this happened, and it's kind of been forgotten. But as part of what we're going through, not just with the Red Shed, but with the things we will do when we get back uh, playing, I mean, boy, I, mean, I just cannot wait. <laughs> I hate flying over the Atlantic, but I cannot wait to get back over to see some games. And I believe we will pack Pataudry out and I will have to open, I hope, the upper RDS um, when we get back. But our goal is to, to put some um, put, put stuff together for families. Yes, for the red shed type, uh, red shed type of guys, etc. When we get back playing, um, you know, We'll have gone through a lot of trauma at, at the end of the day, Mal, because th there are people dying as a result of this. But, you know, um, we have to go through what we go, go through. And um, I mean, when we do get back playing football, um, again, this 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 um, um, first few games and hopefully beyond that should be something special. And we are going to be recognising our season ticket holders and our different membership group people at the beginning of the season. And we'll hold that for just now and announce it in the next few weeks. You mentioned the community side of things, um, different main fans. I mean, 10% is going to, from every season ticket bought, is going direct to the community trust. And, you know, just a word on Liz and her team, they're doing a fantastic job. They've got this fantastic network, aren't they? Because they've been in, you know, they've set up this network within the community. So any money raised, it really is going to good causes on the ground, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And so let me be clear, though, we're not taking 10 percent of the season ticket money and giving it to the trust. It's actually matching the directors. We've all agreed to match it. So if we bring in two million on season ticket sales, that goes to the club. And what we as directors have agreed to do is to match 10 percent of that. So we will separate to that, give 200,000 to the trust and the trust needs it because they, too, have a lack of income just now because you know, the 4G pitches, they can't rent out at Cormac Park, you know, and they can't be doing some of the um, uh, programs that they're doing just now as well for, for obvious reasons. And um, uh, we've also uh, put 100,000 of that up immediately to, to help the trust 
you know, as well. But uh, Liz and the team, you know, um, I've got a session with Liz and with Stephen Sweeney and Robbie Hederman. You know, it's not the trust in the club. It's one organization. And um, seeing the team come together to put for this call center, for example, Mal, is just kind of heartening. And listen, um, Liz is a cup half full kind of person. Um, and um, and she did accuse me the other day of being relentless, uh, even being in the States on us driving forward and all the campaigns we're doing within the club and within the trust. But uh, no, the trust people um, are amazing. One other thing I want to mention as well is we did announce Aberdeen Junior free. We want every under 12 child to be able to be an Aberdeen Junior member. We're over a thousand just now, and that may have gotten forgotten a wee bit, but but we want all of those uh, younger folks, um, for example, in the primary schools, we want them to be able to sign up for Aberdeen Junior. We're going to include things like access to two free games during the league season. And there's lots of other things we're going to do as well. So um, let's just make sure that um, this is any parents are listening there or younger kids that, that you sign up for Aberdeen A Junior if you're 12 and under. Dave, when you became chairman, you must have thought that you'd have some challenges, but I don't think anybody could have predicted this, could they? I mean, you know, the club celebrates its birthday next week, uh, 118 years, but I, I mean, to put it in some kind of scale, I mean, this is probably as big a challenge off the field as the club's ever faced, isn't it? Well, yeah, Stuart and I kind of laugh about that now and again. I, I said to him, you give me a hospital pass there, Stuart, you know, <laughs> to use the rugby term um, or football term. But but no, listen, um, it's it's um, we've got a really, really strong board of directors. And, and we work, all work well together, you know. I mean, I probably talk to um, most of the directors, certainly just now, every other day to, to kind of catch up. But look, um, it is what it is. Um, we thought that the challenge of getting the money, and we've ended up about 14 million almost for Cormac Park, getting to fund that and be debt free was a major challenge. And then, of course, we're beginning to take a deep breath as you may know from October, 90 days, and we'll take a look at the new stadium situation. And then this comes up. But, you know, um, I've learned a long time ago, you know, I wish I know I knew when I was uh, 31, what well, I know now at 61. Um, but this is time for calm, uh, being calm and collected, sleeping on things, um, you know, talking to people, getting feedback, other opinions. Uh, before kind of making decisions and I, listen we are a very very well run club and let me just say Mal you know three years or three seasons three sorry three summer transfer windows we've had multiple players out six seven eight players every year right we set about last season to sort that out and we've sorted it out and of course um, this summer there aren't any players that are um, uh, really um, or only a few players out a uh, contract, you know. Um, but we see that as a benefit, you know, in the sense that when we come back uh, after this, we'll have a strong squad of players in place that are able to uh, kind of help us uh, drive forward. Whereas, you know, and, and it is tough that many other clubs um, are likely to be in a position of, with multiplayer players being out of contract, having significantly different squads, uh, unfortunately to them. But from our perspective, you know, we set out to do that. We also set out as well, Mal, to spend more money than we're bringing in. But it was a deliberate decision to invest on the basis of driving the club forward. But, you know, um, the good news is, is that we didn't, to use the term speculate, to accumulate. It was all done in a plan. And what we have done obviously being a very well-run club and that plans, you know, um, I think we are in better shape than an awful lot of more uh, clubs and, and we're blessed to be in that position to be able to withstand this um, situation that we are in. And um, so, yeah, 90 days as, as chairman are, are just over and it's uh, it's been quite uh, quite eventful. Yeah, just finally, I mean, you see the football will come back and we'll all celebrate it. 
I've got a special programme organised already. So, you know, we'll do a lot around the first game. But I think hopefully when we do come back, well, we will come back stronger, won't we, for this experience. I mean, the way everybody's pulled together has is, is, is just been so encouraging. And as I say, the, the club will come back stronger. Yes, I mean, look, at the end of the day, football is really, um, you know, is secondary to everything that, that, that the world has gone through just now. But by in saying that, football's an important part of many people's lives, you know? And in fact, um, sometimes when you don't have something, you miss it the most. And right now, you know, we are missing, um, we are missing um, football and the other things that people like to do. I think there'll be an appreciation in society generally for um, how fortunate we, we kind of are having been through this. I mean, in the States here, they're talking about 200,000 deaths in the next few months. Um, and, um, you know, and um, I mean, the, the good news to a degree is that the curve might um, kind of plateau in the next month or so, but there's a lag between that and all the trauma. And so, look, we're going to go through, and in Scotland as well, UK, it's going to be a lot of um, heartache this next period of time. But look, um, at the end of the day, um, it's about seeing these things through, learning from experiences um, uh, from that. But, you know, again, back to the football, and um, I think we, we, we see this through. I mean, you and I will tell the, uh, will tell the folks listening into this that, I keep telling you that um, let's get more pictures in the match programme and don't make it so many pages. Um, um, you, <laughs> you can take the boy out of Aberdeen, Aberdeen out the boy, my, my view there is, let's save on some printing costs, right, Mal? And here, here we go. Um, we're going to probably go from a 60-page to a 120-page A4-sized special edition programme for the first one. So um, I'm sure you'll be relishing that as well, right? Absolutely. Listen, Dave, really appreciate your time as always. OK, keep, keep up the good work and I'm sure we'll touch, it, touch base again soon. Well, um, stay safe, everybody. Please, um, please stay safe. Please uh, stay indoors and hashtag still standing free from Atlanta. <laughs>